no minutes. Did I? Yeah. Is that how I messed up? I see what I did. I completely and totally messed up. I will have to. Well, why don't we just pass it over the man? Yeah, I'm sorry. I somehow. I thought I had seen him a long time ago, and then um, I, I couldn't find him. Because it was June 27th, right? It was June 27th. June 27th. Yeah. Somehow I, I replaced the... Oh, here. They just came. No. Did you just send them out? Yeah, but yeah. I, I just realized out. I... Um... It says draft. Oh, yep. Yeah, June yeah, so, yeah. Okay. I'm, actually, I'm reading this real quick, and I thought I actually had sent out an agenda again. No. Yeah, you sent them, and I looked at them quickly, and I forgot to take them out of the yeah, I have video. copies if you want. I didn't see anything, too. But well, we could pass them out here. They were fine. Yep, they were fine. Don't see them? Richard, do you have them? Yeah. I have not. So, uh, sure, I'll take a copy. Um, I said, I apologize. I just failed to sit. I said, here's the minutes in the agenda, and I looked at the, the back of the email, and I had not included the, the minutes. Mm -hmm. So, that was and, my fault. And for those of you who who were really counting on a meeting two weeks ago. I'm really sorry that we didn't have a quorum. Yep. Yeah, well, we're all, a lot of us are at fault, right? Yeah, it wasn't just you. It wasn't just you. No. Is that only been you we would have had in the meeting today. That's what I figured. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Reluctantly. Reluctantly. Without you. <laughs> so, uh, certainly there's. There's not, not much to uh, comment on, I don't think, but I'll let people have come to work if they need any more time. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as submitted. And second. All those say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Um, I guess before we get into more discussion on the master plan um, chapter, um, David did send us something about a grant. A possible uh, grant. Yeah, it, it just came across my desk, so I sent it out to the. And I, um, I don't know if folks saw that. I, I, do, do you generally have a sense as to um, how successful communities are and what's involved in those? And, and I do and not. Secondly, it, it, is there? I think I may have only said it to you as a. Yeah, because I didn't. Oh. Oh, okay. uh, they, so, we're not on plan link, so I saw uh, there. Is this the Invest in H? No, grant? they used to have no. It's, I no, think it's it was. the Housing Opportunity Grant. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And Hanover got one, um, and you know they award them based on whatever the criteria are until they run out of money, and then you might get into the next round when it's refunded. Mm -hmm. So Hanover did get one and then didn't get an implementation grant and now has an implementation grant. So I think you, you know, and I don't know what the match requirements are at all. Um, you know, like they might pay 80% in the town case, 20%. I'm not, not sure if there's anything like that. So I, I, I could ask one of my former colleagues like, about it, but, um, um, yeah, so I mean, I, how, yeah, they do get them. It can be used for anything. No well, housing. What what it stuff. said was, um, first of all, there are a couple of we, uh, webinars, one of which we've missed, but there's one coming up on the 13th of August, uh, and um, I think you need to attend that webinar in order yeah. to yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, submit. I did send it to everyone. You did. Okay. And some of the activities uh, that they fund are update housing, land use, and vision sections of a master plan, 
uh, conduct a housing needs assessment or analysis, audit a municipality's land use regulations, or create new uh, or amend existing land use regulations. Um, so there's one on conducting a housing needs and analysis. Assessment or Look analysis. On the screen is there. That sounds interesting. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I assume it's for people who are not necessarily satisfied with the opinions that are out there regarding their communities. Well, the question is who are you going to hire to do it? And the town of Hanover hired the Regional Planning Commission to do that component and then hired Opticos to do like the uh, part of the assessment. Oh, so you're suggesting they're not going to tell us anything new? There are two out there, and we should just. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that's who the town of Hanover ended up going with was uh, the regional planning commission, because you know, in, in, you know, thinking that they're objective and had access to data, and then put a lot more money into the opticus looking at the. Um, situation in Hanover. So, but I, I'll say somebody's got to be on top of the consultant. Yeah, I mean that's... You know, reviewing their work, we're going to have to need to go out, you know, to bid for who the consultant is, and then we need to be, like, right on them, making sure that they are actually not giving us boilerplate and, um, you know, doing a good job with what they're doing. So. I'm not against it. I'm going to say it's not without a lot of, you know, spending our resources dealing with them. And the town may have to pay for some of that. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a match or not. You know, I just I wasn't involved in that study. I mean, my, my sense, I think, is probably somewhat similar to what you're, I think, hinting at, Vicki, is that. The administrative burden and uh, um, might be greater than what our capabilities are to, right, well, to just manage it. Somebody needs to be on top of it and working with the um, consultant, making sure they're on target, and you know, making you know, we need to read every little thing. Just like oh, you know, give us the final report, and then we pay them, and then we look at what we have. You know, you need to like be on it. Yeah, How long of process is it? Opticos was, it was, I think that was a full year that between the Regional Planning Commission and Opticos. And, you know, and it's, it's good. It's, it's really, we used it as the basis of our housing chapter mm -hmm. um, in Hanover. I think that there's, there's benefit in going through the process even if we would not get a grant because it clarifies a lot of your thinking about things. What's the problem? Applying for the applying grant. Applying for the grant. Writing mm -hmm. the grant application That's is, is not horrible, usually. I mean, it well. can't be that horrible. And, right. and it, it lets you work through your thinking about our, our thinking about the town and the vision and act, you know, addressing some of the issues that are raised here. Mm -hmm. um, and then <coughs> if you do get the grant, Geez, that's a nice problem to have. Well, it is, except you need to, you know, get a consultant list, go out to bid, interview them, and then, you know, so it's not without, no. you know, yeah. a lot of follow-up. Right. right. I think, I think, the writing the grant part is, they're looking to give these grants out. They're looking yes, they to are. support people. Yes. It's not like you're in an academic institution and there's two grants and there's 30 people applying. Yep. So, I mean, this is, well, it's I mean, we still have to do our homework, yes, but it's not, ex, not no. excruciating. No. No. And there are a lot of smaller communities in New Hampshire that are applying for these um, also. It's not just all the big towns. So. I mean, uh, <coughs> certainly the big, my experience has been the bigger towns have the administrative staff to be able right. to chase these mm -hmm. things. Well, so I'll tell you, tend to be yeah, the ones our planning board the, did not, in Hanover, the planning board was not like, you know, the staff worked with the consultants and, you know, brought the planning board in when there was something to share with the planning board. You know, there was a workshop and, and then, you know, preliminary results and final results. So 
That was yeah. all the plan board just saw, you know, good stuff that had been produced and edited by the staff and reviewed by the staff. So, so were you involved in that editing process? Uh, I saw a draft, but I wasn't a staff person, and so I submitted comments to another staff person, yeah. not directly to the so consultant. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're saying that somebody other than the planning board would do this. Maybe. The planning board is not going to get paid to do this because why do right. we need money? We don't, our problem is we don't have the time to do right. it, so we would right. pay a consultant to do it. That's what we're be wanting money for. Right. And somebody on the planning board is going to need to basically be managing the project. Right. But you were saying in Hanover it went, it was done by staff. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Paid staff that worked for the town. We worked with the consultants. We d we found the consultants. You know, we wrote, wrote up the bid papers, interviewed the consultants, you know, screened, interviewed, you know, and then worked with the consultant to get. Uh, you know, materials that would be, you know, suitable for our planning board to review. No matter what field you're in, particularly healthcare, my experience, you know, consultants come in and think they know, you know, and they're just going to copy paste from Mass General to Dartmouth Hitchcock, and you cannot allow okay. that to happen, and you could not allow, you know, a copy paste of Hanover. To, to mine. Well, and that's what we got. Right. We got somebody, and you know, it wasn't the Opticos people. Of course, they have a template, and they did just, you know, but they had to do a bunch of work in Hanover because it, it was an unusual housing market situation. But our master plan consultant was like, really, they spent so little time in town. It was not help, you know. Yeah. So yeah, because whoever did, they'd have to spend a lot of time in line learning about line, obviously. I mean, well, it's understanding our market, our housing market. Yeah, yeah. So you know, they have to understand mm -hmm. all the details. Of I mean, there's no harm in submitting, but then, <coughs> I mean, and what do we want to? What well, you know? What's I, I what's guess, our main question? Is the the other thing? What do we really want to use a consultant for? Right. Well, having played enough around with um, a lot of the vision software that we have that is how the tax assessor um, manages the properties in town. I, I think that there's um, room to understand our housing better in a more regularized way. You know, he, he goes around and spot looks at things, but nobody's done a systematic look to see how much of the town is in conservation, how much is in current use. How many barns are out there? You know what? What kind of? You know, there's no statistics about the town along those lines that come from the tax assessor. Or there's nobody charged with that kind of work, and that, that would form kind of a basis for um, the housing needs assessment. Well, I don't know how you know. So it's got to. We, you know, you need to know what you've got. In terms of, you know, what potential is there for ADUs and barn conversions and that kind of thing? If that is something that we're thinking about, mm -hmm. um, loosening or modifying our current zoning mm -hmm. to allow more of, so it, how, how many potential are there? Yeah, so you're saying what the impact would be, basically, if we, if we did that, yeah. The impact of the town. And then, you know, and in the context of what the market demand is to understand the upper valley, and you wouldn't have to, it wouldn't be, you know, looking at line is, is the, you know, the problem through a pinhole. But, you know, certainly the line is, gets washed over with the demands of mm -hmm. the upper valley, so. Uh, one comment that I would make is that I, I did spend a little bit of time trying to understand the methodology of the uh, upper valley lake centipede estimate of the amount of housing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think what they said was it was 50% uh, or component one and component two were each 50%. And the first component was 
the projected growth of your town. Mm -hmm. Second projected, the second component was uh, the uh, your sh your fair share of workforce housing, which was assessed on a county level, mm -hmm. uh, and um, and so presumably whatever uh, whatever large services required employees in your county, you were responsible for whatever percentage of your your population was of the, of the total county, um, which, you know, didn't, I mean, it is one way to do it. I'm not sure that it's totally fair. Um, but the first component, just going back to that, I mean, we know what, our, what the growth of our town is. And, and it's really not growth, or it's even even according to their records, it was I think it was three point four percent. Three people. Uh, it was three people. It was it was very it was very small. Yeah. And so if that was half of it, um, you know, I guess I'm I'm wondering where does that mean that the entire you know 140 houses by you know, 145 by 2040, is that all supposed to be workforce uh, housing? Because we're not growing. Uh, so I, I guess I had some real questions about how they got those numbers that I that I don't understand. I don't like the county uh, part of it, and um, and so you know there is some appeal to being able to uh, really understand where an assessment comes from. Um, even if it's done by a consultant that you have to ride Russia on. Well, why don't we invite the Regional Planning Commission to explain it more? I mean, that's, that's a, a good, that's a yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. most population models, I mean, if you look at something larger than Lyme, is, you know, you get your natural increase, and then you have your deaths, and you have in-migration and out-migration. And here, if we were able to retain all the children that are born here, we would have a huge housing demand, because there's a lot of kids that come through Lyme, but, you know, they are also all out migrants and, you know, and a few come back, but not that many. So, I mean, in terms of looking at a population model, I think we're too small. But it, it, the population growth based on, you know, the past trends isn't really, you know, uh, you know we're not getting any information about what's really happening because it's not a thing that's based on past trends. Has a lot to do with um, uh, the economy. Yeah. I mean, why why do people live here? Is because they can work here. You know, they work in the area and they need a place to live. And um, <coughs> would I mean? I think it's kind of interesting to ask. You know, would would your kids come back and live in Lyme if? You know, all things considered. Is, so, you know, so I guess, so I guess I mean, it, it, it would be interesting to know how they project growth. Mm -hmm. Well, the other, the in other, other words, if it's not on the basis of right. what, what has been happening, how then is it projected? Right. But then there's another. Right. Well, I think that they do look at at those trend lines, but that doesn't really explain to us how we get our growth. I think it's a lot more market driven. I mean, when um, big companies go down or you know, things change, like if the post office leaves, there's gonna be a bunch of people who are no longer gonna be employed in the Upper Valley because you know, that's a huge employer and you know, they're talking about putting all the sorting facility down in Hartford, Connecticut. And um, so maybe some of them will be moving down to Hartford and that takes away some of the housing demand, but that's kind of like job related. Um, well, the I was just going to say the other factor is that population is one thing, but the number of houses is another. I mean, we are we are growing in number of houses because we've had quite a few built. I, mean, I can think of a lot, so we can have more houses, more units, but we can have less. We could have less population, even though we have more houses. So that's sort of another way of. Looking. Yeah, that actually is the way they they do it. They're they're talking about household. Right. Yeah. And, um, we people... and we do add. What do we add? Five per year. Is that what the around? Yeah. Yeah. So in a five-year period, five houses a year. Yeah. Right. Well, but it's. I mean, there have been two housing 
I mean, over the, the average that uh, David sent us over, what was that, 10 or 12 years, it was about two houses per year. Oh, so two houses, yeah. yeah. But recently, I think in the last two years, we've had it's been about two houses. I can think of five this year, I think, really. Really? Where? Well, Marial Beach is the only one. There's one yeah, down that, the River yeah. Road. There's one up on. Yeah, there's a new house going on down at River Road. There's a new one on um, uh, Acorn Hill Road. Um, they just built one um, um, uh, right in front of Horace uh, Reed's house. Um, yeah, up there on um, what's the name of that road? Um, yeah, North Stores Hill. Or yes. Stores Hill. Yeah. 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 So that's four, and I think. That <laughs> anyway, that's, this that's, it, but it didn't happen in one year. That's over two or three. No, I think that's two or three years. Yeah, those permits are over a couple of years. Yeah. 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 They, they seem like yeah, they David provided us yeah. a, right. a table there, and you know, I think since 2020, there have been uh, six, nine, ten, twelve new houses, and then conversions are 80 ADUs. There have been Seven, eight, ten. So twenty-two total uh, uh, um, housing units. Yeah, probably. Let's see, uh, ten plus. Uh, what did I say? Since twenty twenty. Since twenty twenty. Ten, twelve. Well, there's twenty two. Yeah. The common. There's five in the common. I I know I so. missed a meeting here here and there. So I mean, this may be something you guys already covered, but is there a basis for the? Position that growth is desirable? No. I, 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 I don't I know. A couple people in town who would who would say, right. we ought not to be growing. We ought to be staying just the way we are. It's fine the way it is. We don't need, we don't, we don't want Lyme to become Canaan or Enfield or. But, but, that's a, but I, guess the, I guess the position, at least the way I understand it, is that regardless of our individual positions, we don't know how the town sits on this as a whole. Yeah. And so our first chore, chore, at least the way I see it, correct me if I'm wrong, is to, is to go through the motions of what we might do if we accepted this goal, put together with strategies and questions, and then put that out to the community and get our first sense well, of how they feel well, when you're why wouldn't you go out to the community with the initial question of, do we want to grow? Because I think there's a certain amount of education that we are obliged to give them. Uh, because there is, after all, a housing crisis. Uh, and I'm not sure. I, but, I but that could be one of the questions. Do you think well, people, people, you know, that's one of the, one of the questions? Well, you, I mean, there's state statutes that address it. And, and New Hampshire's not alone. It's a nationwide. Uh, so it's, I don't know, that, that you know, I think Lyme has every right to refuse to participate in that solution, uh, but it does seem to me that there is an obligation, if we're going to ask a survey, to educate people on the situation before we ask the question. Just like we did with the, with the, with the um, solar. You don't think we did that? I don't, well, I think, yeah, we could have done better, I think, with the solar survey. I don't think we had enough information in on the survey. But. I mean, I, 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 I kind of disregard some of the responses we got because they weren't, they didn't fit with what we ended up wanting to do. No, I don't think but that's fair. I, I think getting back to well, the exactly number of units. We, I mean, we had responses that told us to do one thing and we ended up not doing it because we thought it didn't make sense. Maybe it didn't, but. Well, we, we, you, but have to, you have to analyze the number and you know try to get a sense of, of where the majority of the town, <coughs> mm -hmm. or at least, I mean, actually, we only had 300 and yeah. some odd people who respond. Care to speak out. The people who care to speak out. But it seemed like the majority of them were actually pro what we did, um, or, or at least we formed our plan on the basis well, of. Well, and it certainly got approved at town meeting, so. Right. Right, so so I I sort of thought that was successful, mm -hmm. uh, that methodology, and so that's why I'm thinking. <coughs> uh, well, we we do need to go out to um, 
people yeah. with you know whatever and you know engage them. But I, but I think for people to, to give worthwhile answers, they have to have some background. Because I mean, no criticism of people in town, but there's so many people don't have a clue. I mean, they don't know anything about this stuff. So you send out a questionnaire without explaining stuff, mm -hmm. they can't really answer. Well, you know, what if we answer. ask something like each year, approximately two new housing units are permitted. How many housing units per year are you comfortable with? I mean, yeah. Well, but, I mean, yeah, something like that. Who would know? That answer. I mean, that's how, what how would you know? And and what? you know, I'm gonna. Oh, I mean, I haven't said anything up to now, but I, I want to address uh, the question: Do we want growth? And the question that I'll ask is: um, Why? Why are all the local businesses reducing hours, reducing the days of operation? Um, the Lime Country Store, I said, would it help if there were more housing for people that might be able to work in your store? And JJ, I think she said, duh, um, that, that she's dying for, for staff people. She's cutting hours back. They used to be open till 8 at night. Now they're open right. till 6. Ariana's. Um, well, they still were open those longer hours and had more staff, and we didn't have more housing at that time. So it's clearly no well, loss of housing well, that this so is that but, um, but no, that's To the contrary, people were willing to drive 45 minutes for a job that was okay. I think the pandemic has changed everything. People say, wait a minute, I used to be able to work at, you know, I could work at home. Now obviously for a service job, you got to come into the Lime Country Store to help out at the Lime Country. But I, there was also, housing was more affordable 40 years ago. Well, that, yeah. certainly that too. Um, and so, so people I think, could live in town and work, you know. Yeah. So to say, is there an argument for growth? I think there's an argument for providing housing for all kinds of people. Um, you know, the, the Dartmouth DH people are going to be able to afford to move in, I think it's really hard to find a place to move into. People want to downsize, seniors, uh, senior care. I mean, there are lots and lots of reasons that people need housing. And so, um, yes, I think we need, uh, we need to go out and, and say to the town, we are thinking about how can we provide housing options? Teachers can. Unless their spouse happens, you know, uh, and and so how how can we do this? And I think I mean this is this is what we well, talk about. Well, I think there's a place for should we do this, uh, as well as how can we do this? Yeah, you but I think should we, we do, do that? that? You've already, you're already assuming yeah, that it's yeah. desirable, and you ought to give people a chance well, to weigh so, in on that. So they may well agree with you that that, mm -hmm. that it is desirable. Uh, I might agree with you. I don't know, but but I mm -hmm. think. Okay. If, if we haven't asked that question, we ought to ask it before we go too far down the path of figuring out how to uh, how to make make more housing happen. Um, well, yeah, but that, and that's all. Only we're really doing is saying, okay, we got a lot of strategies here. You got ADUs. Um, uh, we have all of the literature that's in, that's on the internet on expanding houses in a village. Uh, and so we know a little bit about where it might go and we know a little bit about our town. So basically we just, uh, I think what we're doing is right. We put together a, you know, a, we throw together a plan that is, that we think is feasible, but it, but it starts with, as you say, it, do you do you think that this housing goal is even reasonable? Mm -hmm. Is it is it even reasonable? After all, it's going to be like twice as many. If you said if you said twenty two in a year, it's going to be twice that many. Probably. Oh yeah. You know, um, so it's it, it's um, just to meet the the first goal. You right. know, uh, and if we provide for it, it may not happen anyway. So I mean, you know, we're not 
even if we even if we provide for it, it may not happen anyway. I mean, if we change the, the rules to yeah, well, that, that, that may not. That would be a nice problem. And that's, <laughs> but, but you know, I I just think that uh, um, we need to we need to. I think there is a place. Uh, you know, because I'm not really absolutely certain I want to grow at that kind of rate here. Um, but I do know that we're elected for representing the people. So, right. you know, we have to figure out what they think. So, did, uh, at, in the last meeting, uh, there was a request to come up with questions yes. to send out to the town to ask um, what, uh, yeah, I what, what we might ask the town both to tune them up to the fact that we're even thinking about it, it would be great to have people, uh, it would be great to have people come into this our meeting. Did you get mine? You did. We're here, I'm gonna so this is, these are just some things that I wrote down. And that I okay, just I'm going to actually them. pass out, this is from Rich. Okay, Here, pass, thank you. And then these are from Matt. Okay, okay. I have, I wrote them down too, but I, I no, I'm handing you the wrong. Uh, if you want to send them to me, I can print them out. Okay. So I think that we, the thing that we never quite state. Who is this from? Is that. The last one's me. The 1989 zoning rules were written with an idea to not allow growth essentially in town. It was to try to keep the town exactly the way it was. I'm not sure well, I agree I'm with not, that. But, yeah, I don't. Um, well, I have talked to people <coughs> that were there, and they say substantially that. Um, that okay. Well, there was certainly a minute. I was there. I wrote, I don't know if I was there. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was on the board when we wrote the zoning. Uh -huh. And yeah, there was certainly, it, it allowed for, or it didn't allow a lot of growth, but there's, in the zoning, there is a room for a lot. Well, and yet, I mean, it hasn't happened. happened. No, it hasn't happened, but that's not the well, problem. Right. I mean, that's just I, other factors, right? I have cost of land. Well, cost well, of land. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. Well, I think, well, I think when you're in a market yeah. that is very high cost, exactly. you, you can't expect, you can't solve the housing crisis with affordable housing on, on a private scale. And even with nonprofits, as Vicki is you know, shared with us what Hanover's done in a community that has water, you know, municipal services. Right. So you just, mm -hmm. we're not in a, in a spot where we can really do that much, um, I don't think. So I, don't, I have, I have, I will reluctantly cite uh, the experience of an applicant before this board and before the zoning board, um, who wanted to put in 30 or so units of housing that would have been substantially in line with this. Uh, this was in 2015, so it's nine years ago. Um, it was absolutely shut down by many, many factors in the ordinance. Um, and so there's a there, there's a example of a, a developer who wanted to put in a bunch of units, excuse me, a bunch of units um, that would have been exactly the kinds of things that, that this group of people is thinking of. Some would have been workforce eligible, some would have been um, made it more expensive. Was this the one that you were involved in? This is the Pinnacle Project. So yeah. did that go for a town vote? Yeah, that was, that no. was turned by so the town. That was turned down because it absolutely violated a huge number of, of the constraints of the, of the ordinance. Right. And, and so we talked to the zoning board, asked for a variance, and that was simply not available. So I will just say the effect of the town ordinance has been to make it extremely difficult to do that kind of project. Right, well, but, but that was also voted 
Wasn't there a zoning amendment that was voted on by the town? And there have been several yeah. zoning amendments. And they, and they and, voted and, on by yeah, the Well, I think that that scale is just too big in one place. I mean, that's what the town's been saying, is that that's too many. And a small, smaller version of that might be exactly what we need, or, you know, three smaller versions of that might be mm -hmm. totally okay. But and, and what do you say, especially in this um, higher cost environment, what do you say to a developer who says, it's simply not economical to develop a, tri a triplex or a quad. Um, it just doesn't make economic sense. Well, I'm going to ask them, right. how much are you taking? What and difference does know, that make? Well, what? because that affects the, the, the price. Of and course. Of what you're going to be offering. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and yeah, everybody has to, you know, feed their kids and their dog and pay their taxes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I don't see that a, a lot of what's being built here is anything but like grandeur, okay? And people keep buying it. And so we're, we've got a, I think, a exceptionally luxurious idea about what housing in Lyme is and what the market will bear for it. Mm -hmm. And so we need to redefine that if, you know, I don't know how you change people's tastes or what builders want to build. But look, that. All of us here on this, in this group, have our own views and our own opinions mm -hmm. about what housing ought to be and how people ought to live or how how, how we want to live and yep. you know what sort of development they want to see or what sort of urban density they want to see. But our job on this uh, this planning commission, in my view, is not to come here and advocate for what we personally want. It's to uh, make some sort of a determination about what the town of Lyme collectively wants and then try to reflect that in, in whatever regulations or ordinances that we we want to promulgate. Yep. Um, you know, regardless, I mean, <laughs> trust me, I'm on the select board and we do stuff all the time that I personally find abhorrent and I would never want to do if I were the czar of Lyme, but that's not my job. Yes. Our, our job is to reflect, is to reflect the, you know, the community. So. And that's why I, it seems to me I agree with you. I think whatever we do, our first step ought to be to get to try, however imperfectly, to get some sort of sense about what the community's view on this stuff. Well, isn't that what we're trying to do with asking people questions about yeah. some of the goals that we've asked about? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And maybe yeah. the first question yeah. is, yeah. you know, what kind of growth are you comfortable with in line, rather mm -hmm. than, you know, talking about how many houses you need. Yeah, these are mine. I'm sorry. I didn't okay, there are two that start out draft housing goals. Can I just ask a point of order here? One of them is dated July 25th. And that's Nats. No, 23rd is Nats. No, mine's 23rd. Well, who, yeah. Does it matter who's is who? I, I just, well, just for clarity. Oh, okay. Yeah. She works. <laughs> so, I mean, I think. That's the one, one we're going to pay attention about that. The hmm. only being able to put one unit in a barn. Oh, okay. Oh, Being able to only put one unit in a barn that has electricity and water and sewer and all that uh -huh. stuff for five years. I mean, if you drive around town, there's a lot of barns that are falling down. Mm -hmm. And if they were converted to productive units economically, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would be attractive for the town as well mm -hmm. and preserve old barns. So, I agree with you. I so think that, was, that, was, that one is a no-brainer that we probably well, But couldn't. the other thing you have to remember is that if we change that, then somebody could build a building, building and build six thing. units in it. Tim, well, that's, what bad thing would happen if somebody mm -hmm. built six units? Um, it depends where. How many? Well, have. We, it, 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 but even before we get there, yeah. you know, I think it's important to, to think about these questions first because right now we're just talking about our own values. Mm -hmm. Let's let's just try and figure out whether there is some material here that we can ask questions about mm -hmm. that will give us an idea of how the town feels. Mm -hmm. um, that's. 
you know, I mean, I could go to mine, but I, that's probably not the least interesting, but that was the approach that I Yours had. Yours is the 23rd? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, I, I just sort of started out with goal number one, um, and I used the 145 units by 2040, mm -hmm. which was the DLS, and, and that's a bit of a shocker, you know, I, but, so I thought I'd put that right out there. And then I organized it as comments and questions. You know, so basically, in order to achieve our housing target, we would need to expand housing by about 50 units every five years more. This would be a 100% increase in our current level of housing expansion. Do you think such an increase in housing in Lyme is realistic? Is the housing goal too high or is it too low? And are you concerned? that our fair share of workforce housing may have been overestimated. You know, like, that was that's a lead-off question. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you mean by realistic? And what do you mean by, I think you need to define workforce housing. Yeah, um, we have that in the, yeah, we have that, yeah. We have it defined yeah. elsewhere, yeah, and I agree. Yeah. It's not necessarily, this isn't the final draft. Right, I'm right, just, right, yeah. I, you know, we know what workforce yeah. housing yeah. is, okay? Yeah. So so if we can, if we can define it, we can define it the way that the statute defines it, and um, and that that's pretty easy to understand, I think. Um, yeah, and but they're saying all housing units; it's not just workforce. You know, just right. to refine that, I think they're saying that that number of units isn't just workforce; it's, it's for all. I know, but units. but 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 what I'm but I'm, what I'm saying, I'm actually leading off with right. the fact that it doubles the amount yeah. um, that we're currently doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, you know, how does that sit with you? Yeah. Uh, and so I, I think that that was an opening question mm -hmm. that it would be nice to know if everybody said, that doesn't sit well with me at all. This right. is a lot of houses. Right. It's going to change the character of Lyme. Mm -hmm. I want to know that mm -hmm. um, right off the bat. And then the, the second thing that I said, because we went to the, it will be, it, uh, consistent with the capacity of our school. So I pointed out that mm -hmm. it's been estimated that our school population could increase by as much as 10 to 15 percent comfortably with adjustment to class sizes. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, facility expansion would be necessary. Yeah. Do you think that the capacity of our current schools should limit our housing expansion so that we avoid having to build a new school? Because that's another thing that is probably a red line for some people. Okay, so I figured I would throw that out there because we had thought of that. Yep. Um, yeah, I said a similar thing there. I said it is estimated by our principal that the Lyme school population could be increased by up to 30 students. If they were spread somewhat evenly between the classes, more than this would probably, ne probably necessitate, necessitate adding physical space to the school. Would you be concerned if the physical space of the school needed to be enlarged or more teachers needed to be hired? So it's say basically the same thing. I just put 30 students because that because he John was really saying it was 30 students. I think. Yeah, we have one classroom, right. yeah. wiggle room. Yeah, right. they took one classroom for an office for the SAU, so they're down to one extra classroom now. Right. That they can expand into. They had two, but they took one for an office. So, I mean. But the SAU can move. Yeah. I mean that's yes. that's the other thing. Right. It doesn't need to be in the school. Yeah, they could. They can rent. Brent's got plenty of. I mean, they could be anywhere. They could be anywhere. Yeah, right. People might. Of course, we don't make those decisions, and that may be in fact too rational. But so I, I would say, just so do you, do you do you think the premise of that is wrong? So the concern I have with all of these is it would be very easy to say, to leave the witness. Oh, you wouldn't want any um, new housing in town, um, and to to phrase these in ways that make anything but no. Would you want anything? No, I, I don't think so. I think I would, I think uh, these are just these are just having to do with our goals. If I was going to write this up, I would write several paragraphs mm -hmm. on the housing crisis as it is portrayed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pretty much by the, you know, Everybody. the people that right. care. Okay, mm -hmm. I you know I would go into workforce housing. I would go into mm -hmm. um, the lack of people uh, to be employed in mm -hmm. restaurants, etc. So that would be the start. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you would have to, then I think from there, you would have to focus in on these particular goals. I mean, this is going to be a housing chapter that we're ultimately mm -hmm. going to. Going to going to come to so you're right. I think it I think it does need information. This was just sort of a first cut. Right, yeah, because that's so, just fact. I so mean, Rich, that's just facts. I mean, we're just saying facts. We're not leading it. We're just saying these well, are the facts. Well, but you 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 can pick facts that make things look awful. That's what we're going to have. Well, but this is a key <laughs> fact. The, the number of houses fact. we've got to we've got to build is a key fact. Right. And and and, and you know if somebody is, might say, uh, no, I don't like that, but half would be okay. Okay, well, or, or or we can structure the question so that they can actually parse that. Yeah. You know, so, so mm -hmm. you know there are there are ways that you, you you could try and take the edge off of whatever you think I'm leading, but I'm really only trying to get a gut reaction because because th those are the ones that aren't going to change. You know, I think. You know, if you inform somebody, but they have an uh, they have a. Uh, an unchangeable notion of what they want Lyme to be, sure. and they've got a big investment in it. They've got a home that's you know worth eight hundred thousand dollars or whatever. Right. You know, uh, you know. So I, a small house. A small house, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I, I agree. And um, one of the things that my questions. I, I'm sorry that I got this in uh, a week ago, and I, I, I guess I hoped everybody had seen it. I wanted to focus on what, what kind. Of, uh, first off, I want I want people in town to be aware that we're thinking about this because I don't want to roll something out in September, or October, and people say what. So I, I wanted to start this and actually begin to get feedback from people. I wanted to ask about who people thought. Who the residents of town thought might want to move into Lyme, and what are they going to do? What what kinds of occupations? What uh, you know, retired? Are you going to work at the Lyme Country Store? Are you going to work for Dartmouth or DH? What kind of level? What kind of people are they going to be? Trades people, goodness gracious, service workers, um, and then what kinds of housing? would Lyme want to have for these people? Um, and as I drafted these questions, it's like, part of the answer, you know, I, I'm, I'm leading the witness too, and then the, the answer is, well, all of these people should be able to move to Lyme. You know, the retired people, single people, families, all those people should be able to move to Lyme, and any of these occupations could move to Lyme. Um, but what, where would we want them to live? Would it be desirable to have these kinds of people in town? Um, and try to get people to come in and tell us more. So that's, that's where I came from these questions. Um, no. I, I, I see what you're... I see where you're going. I guess I just I look at that kind of process as so it's so it's a little more like a focus group kind of way of doing it, mm -hmm. and it and it, it doesn't usually um, it's very time consuming, uh, and I guess I didn't feel as though we had enough time. Um, we have all the time in the world because we're writing master plan chapter. We're not doing zoning amendments. So, well, then maybe yeah. maybe that's what we should do. We should do focus groups uh, and and try and get get into discussions like that. But I think, regardless, you're going to have to hit them with this. Target. They're going to be okay. So the target's going to have to be there. Right. So and and that's the that's the thing that's going to cause the big gulp. You know, that is really going to be the. You know, I mean, they're, they're thinking, oh, yeah, well, I'd love to have my kids move in and get a nice little cute spot in the common, you know, how's that going to work? How, so, how, you so know, I they, think, you know, they're, <laughs> you can, if you, the facts are, I'm not disputing your facts, but I'm saying that you have to give people context to understand those facts. And right. Rich is kind of setting that up. I'm going to say, I would, I would, well, yes. Because... You, because otherwise, you're just going to get such a strong reaction that people will not be thinking, 
openly at, about anything else you have to say. Right. Well, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. Right. I mean, and, if, and, if, and if that's it, you know, I guess I was going to just, I was just going to put that all into in, in okay. an introduction, talking about the problems mm -hmm. of housing. You know, okay. and and, the, and so, particularly so we got a, sort of Rich's intro to your set of facts is was the way you're. Well, I don't really think that we should be asking people what kind of people should be living here. Mm -hmm. I think we need to go from the premise that everybody's welcome mm -hmm. and and that that is like a core principle that we want to make mm -hmm. uh, housing diverse and you know and for people in different economic you know yeah, different I think economic. Just that, just so I don't examples. think I don't. I think we want to get into these scenarios with people necessarily because what if they all say, "Oh no, we only want to have doctors living here." I don't, I don't want to hear that. I think it sounds okay would, to me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, know, but I think everybody would just say they want people, their friends, you know, just like them. I mean, everybody's going to say, "Right." But I, so I, say, well, I, 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 I think we have here. just like we want it to be, and so I don't want to go back as far as Rich wants to go. I guess with asking. Who should be living here, or who do you think is going to live here? Right. Mm -hmm. We just—I think what we need to observe is that we have a, a range of housing opportunities here now. And we, what we want to do is to try to emulate that with, you know, having small houses, large houses, and mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. it's been pointed out that we don't have like, you know, these kinds of places. But we can talk about that, and I'd rather talk about types of housing rather than types of people. Because that's what we're really trying to get sure. it at is, is housing hmm. types, and that's what our zoning is going to allow is housing types, not types of people. So. But I'll, I'll just say okay. one right. thing yep. that that yep. if you say, well, we want to have small units, maybe suitable for a single person or for a couple. It's easy to say, oh, geez, you know, I, I don't really like that in town. When you're missing out on the, on the thought that, well, this might be somebody that works at the Lime Country Store, or this might be a couple that does things that you actually, oh, wait, they would do that? Somebody would in town could do that? Oh, and that's they'd be in a, they'd be really happy in a studio or a one bedroom home. Oh, because I'm not sure that the town has considered that. I'm not sure that. I mean, there's a lot of big houses in this town, um, and so where where are the people that we really want to be in town? The trades, the teachers, the I mean, all those people. Where are they going to live, and what? And and that's the question that I wanted to foment. And so, uh, but we're not trying to make a city here. We're not trying to make a city. Right. We're trying. And to make there a are a lot of people, and they often go to cities, and because that's where the work is, you know. So, but there's a lot. We are. We're not. We're we're not trying to make a city. We have. We are a small town, and ultimately, you're going to find that small town character is a priority. Okay, I think that's that's going to be true. So the, the real challenge that we have, I think, is housing that's consistent with small town character. But a small town, this Lyme has stopped being a lot of the small town character that we all liked, because there used to be farmers and plumbers and carpenters, and you know a diverse population, and really it has become rather exclusive. Um, all the you know the property the mean house value sale price is eight hundred thousand dollars. I mean who who's gonna be that? So I mean in I know that diversity is a buzzword at the moment, but it really is the, the kind of variety of people that you see in a small town is being lost because of the economic and structure. You can certainly make that point, but but people are going to have their own ideas of what small town character other, is, and you're not going to be able to dictate that. The other thing I'd like to point out is under current zoning, if the, a fire wiped out the common district, you could not rebuild it the way it is with its current charming aspects. You would not be allowed to, under the current zoning. Sure you would. Not allowed. Well, you, everything would be grandfathered. 
But if that land couldn't be used because there was a horrible yeah. oil spill, I don't remember. I'm, I'm well, really if there's could, a, but, yeah. could, yeah. could yeah. you the current zoning elsewhere? would not allow for that build the building the way it is. Yeah, right. It would not allow for the uh, the recreation of that. one line common. I mean that now, but yeah, and everybody's pretty close. And, but but whatever. I don't think we have to consider. Yeah, well, I'm just saying that the, the characteristics that are charming about Lyme are not really allowed in the current conditions. We've, uh, we've moved past, in the last four years, we've moved away from the things that made Lyme desirable. But I don't know, it's still desirable. It still has a small town character, you know? Uh, I mean, you can say it's gone, but no, it's a lot of people feel that it's here. It's, so, it's, it's and not you're not gonna be able to convince them that they're wrong. Just by saying it. Well, and I think even the difference is that people that move up here from wherever, they think it's a small, they think it's right. great. They think it's Disneyland. People that have been here for 50 years have a different idea. Yeah. But we can't, I mean, you know, you talk about farmers, well, that's that's a whole other issue. I mean, the farmers still have some farmers. Yeah. We still have some farmers. We have a few, but they're lead, anyway. Yeah. I don't know. I guess they were tax abatement. <laughs> so, uh, so we're no longer thinking. Uh, do we think that we need to do focus groups uh, to get this kind of nuanced thinking across to people, or do we think, think that we can great, accomplish actually. it with uh, with just a, a, a survey with a long introduction? I have no objection to focus difference. groups, but I, I suspect the number of people who are going to come down here and spend an hour or ninety minutes yeah. focus grouping questions about this is going to be limited to people who have a personal interest of one sort or another. And, and, you know, I don't know how many focus groups you've been involved in. I've been involved in a few of them, and mm -hmm. they're very hard to analyze because you usually will have one or two people that say the same thing over and over again. You have to, uh, you have to, you have to like paste ideas really on boards and, and then afterwards come back in and try and shape it mm -hmm. into something meaningful. Sometimes it can be very difficult. For surveys are a lot easier Without to do. Without somebody with. really strong at conducting them, they're just turning to. Yeah. Well, I, I wonder, we've them. come up with some ideas about goals. And so it took us a while to get there. Isn't that what we're trying to test? Is, you know, how do people feel about those things? Rather than focus groups and opening it up to, you know, another universe of things, um, you know, and certainly in the process of engagement, you know, what else have we missed or what else is important to you can always be asked rather than, you know, that what I'm trying to do is like, let's focus on some specific stuff that hopefully people will have a response to. And if everyone says, oh, this sounds horrible, mm -hmm. um, then let's, you know, find out what, what I think what that's, numbers is good I, for them. You I know? agree, that's the advantage. If everybody, if everybody says this sounds horrible, mm -hmm. then, yeah then we know something. Right. Um, if everybody says this sounds great, I have no problem with it, then we know something also. Um, so, you but, know, I, but I think yeah, to do it, to do a survey that is worth everything, a questionnaire, you've got to give enough information. You know, I think that was the problem we had maybe with the solar. It was just too short. I mean, it means, re it means people have to read a lot. Exactly, that's but the problem. They've got to because they can't answer the question unless you give the facts. You know, I'm not saying that you're going to lead people. I'm just saying we have to give the facts. Yeah. We have to say, okay, this is how many kids the school can, according to the principal. This is what would happen if this. You know, people just need to know that so they can really answer the question. I think you're going to start now, as Matt has said, to define the problem that there is a housing shortage, and you know that is, you know, countrywide, but just. You know, start lead off with that. Because a lot of people you, don't give it damn whether there is. And I think you could, you could also less. mention that this, the, you know, the state is clearly behind this effort. They've got, there's a statute for workforce housing, for changing zoning, uh, to and, and facilitate. Let's face it, if the, the, the towns don't come up with solutions, the state will force it. And they'll tell the towns what to do. Well, they'll, they will enter that process. Yeah. Whether or not they'll succeed, right. I that, don't know, but they will right. enter but that, that is, process. You know, that, that's the reality of it, but that you know, should be in everyone's back of everyone's mind. The, the problem state is, is that our state is like, 
going to give the developer the you know the benefit, but it's not necessarily the person who's living in less than adequate housing. Oh, uh, that, absolutely. That's the problem is that the, they're not targeting like the people. You know, the builders' lobby is really a, is a very strong one. Yeah. And, oh, and, absolutely. You know, so they get to build more houses so that you know other people who aren't even here yet, you know, have right. the opportunities to build, and that's 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 the problem I have. Because you can't force builders to build workforce housing no. because they don't make as much money on that that's unless correct. they get huge subsidies. That's correct. I mean, that's really one of the basic problems. I think that's why we don't have workforce housing a lot of because it all comes down to money. I mean, I you know I did construction for 15 years, so I have some idea, you know, and you, you know, you don't do it unless you're going to make money. And if, well, and if you make no money, kidding, right? If you, right. And if you make money on an 800,000 or you know, twice as much on an 800,000 dollar house, that's what you're going to build. Could we could we start out with a simple statement, perhaps, that um, the planning board um, enjoys and admires the small town quality of Lyme? And is in, interested in preserving that. I mean, that's essentially nobody wants to change that. Right. That I, I think that's around. a very. If very we start with that premise, yep. and then say, under those conditions, under that premise, where do you think we can go? Yeah. Um, that is, in keeping, but also perhaps improving mm -hmm. the town, and giving some opportunities for. A, a slightly more varied population to live here for some of our retirees who want to downsize, for some of our kids who want to come home. Keep it as simple and straightforward as like concrete pieces for you know at each end of the life, and and then you know then go with your facts. Yeah, yeah. I think that I think that. Been because if we can all agree on that small town quality statement, then we we can we have a common understanding that we can build out the details as a series of compromises or, or whatever. Right, but I think yeah, yeah. I mean I think that yeah, yeah sure. All right. I like that because I had, uh, I think you're right about the, we appreciate the small town quality and then I suggested that, that the note start out and, and would follow with the planning boards considering ways to increase housing options to address the housing crisis that affects people in, here in New Hampshire and in the country. Lyme's master plan has always recommended a diversity of housing types suitable for people in a broad range of economic circumstances. That's a quote from the master plan. Toward this end, the planning board is asking, and then, what what should we do? I mean, I, I, that as kind of a preface, lets townspeople know where we are. Okay. And then, maybe into facts, maybe, you know, and then, and then Dig in, but I mean, to say, I think I think he's right to say the planning board appreciates the small town quality. Just making sure that that comes out. Um, Should we also appreciate the push for housing from the state and the federal level? Well. And I mean, one of the questions that I'd like to get from the town people is, would we like some of these services to come back? Um, you know, wouldn't it be nice to have? Well, of course, yeah. everybody would like to have a plumber who lives next door. You know, when your yeah. toilet starts leaking, can you, you know, not that you go in neighborly. Well, you know, how do I fix this? You know, right. but you know, we're not going to yeah, be able to get to control that in any way. What we want to do is, we've got to focus on the houses. Not yeah. the people. Moreover, there's because people that say that'll never come back. And <laughs> well, and and there, I mean, some people don't want to live in a place that they feel like has already changed significantly. I mean, there are a lot of people who grew up here that wouldn't want to live in Lyme now because mm -hmm. they prefer to uh, 
How do we quantify that? How, how do we? Well, you know, if you talk to the tradespeople that come to your house, mm -hmm. and you know, and their family grew up on Market Street, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, right. they don't feel comfortable in this community anymore right. because it's too highfalutin. Right. You know, what in what what can you do about that? Uh, and they're happy. I mean, personally, I did not want to live in Ann Arbor, mm -hmm. and you know, when I worked there either, you know, right. so it's just okay. like. Bleh. I like this quote that the, a diversity of housing types suitable for people in a broad range of economic circumstances, right from the master plan. I think mm -hmm. bringing that back is a mm -hmm. really strong point. Mm -hmm. Right. So if we let off, and I, I kind of wanted to add to, to Evie's idea, the planning board appreciates the small town qualities of our town and want to continue to reinforce land use that contributes to maintaining those small town qualities. So that's know links back to what we're, we're trying to do here and then to Rich's first line the board is considering ways to increase housing options I would say the board is considering ways to address because what we're trying to do is not so much increase housing options as address the housing crisis and that's really our main goal and then one you don't way need more to options, you need people to use the options. One so. way to do that is increasing housing options, but what we want to do is address the crisis. And so, and options, um, you know, are maybe our goals, but you know, I would, I would like to, I don't want to turn them off, but increasing housing options, mm -hmm. you know, what we're trying to do is, is respond to the problem. We wouldn't be sitting here, I don't think, if it wasn't like at our doorsteps that you know housing is a is a crisis in the state, right? We wouldn't be. Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah, and and so we wouldn't be thinking about you know okay, so we want to address the crisis and then how do we how do we best address it? But we really want people to let us know how we should address it is is mm -hmm. what we want to communicate to them. I don't know where all this fits into the discussion, but um, I think it would be interesting to perhaps get the RPC person to come and at some point fairly soon address this 142 units, <clears throat> right. but that we would address that at, a, at a open, uh, uh, an advertised meeting so that people could come and... Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. And, and also learn about it. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's, I, I think it's I don't think that there are many people that would um, agree would that. agree that Lyme should take on that kind of burden. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, I think property um, taxes are a big issue for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, so I, I think I like that for, for two reasons. One is uh, they did, the RPC did offer. We'd be delighted to have somebody come right. explain yeah. this. Yeah, I like uh, that. And then also, it, it, we can advertise that broadly, get a bunch of people in the room on the Zoom to hear how they came to that number, see if they believe it, see. I mean, that, that would help and us. Then I, and then I think the other question is so what? Um, what do you, you know? What is the significance of this number? Is this a number that somebody's going to whack us on the uh, no, on the wrist and say, "Well, you're not coming up with your 142"? You know, no, I'm yeah. sure they will make the point themselves that the state has not actually come up with a number. Uh, they have asked people to make estimates. The state just put this statute out there as well as the process for uh, overruling planning boards. So, right. So, so I mean, to your point. So it's it does have a it does have leverage, but it, uh -huh. it, they, they don't have anything invested in a number. Right. right. The, yeah, it's only a suggestion. I mean, well, the RPC applied their methodology and said, "This is Hanover's. This is Manchester's. This is Lyme," um, and they, I think it's a useful number to say, "Well, these guys said 140 something." Well, I mean, if we, that, that seems enormous 
in the next 15 years. But you know, maybe if we did half that, that would that would go a long way toward making things better, as opposed to you know us thinking, well, two a year is, is enough. I mean, I mean that that's clearly a very big gulf. And, and um, well, what 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 is the bottom line though? I mean, I think isn't the bottom line, it doesn't really matter whether we achieve half the goal or a quarter of the goal, isn't the real danger a developer comes in and says, I've got this 30-acre parcel of land and I want to put 50 units on it, and you're not allowing me to do that. I mean, isn't that really the danger, is that, that somebody with big enough pockets or a project that they're in love with sues the town is that well I think that if I think that I think that, uh, that yes uh, but I think in terms of what how you're going to do in that suit you're going to look a lot better in that suit if you make legitimate um, uh, or you know a, a legitimate effort at trying to uh, relax uh, some zoning yeah. and trying to do some planning, de deciding which districts we're going to uh, expand and how. And if, if that developer has basically just come in and and done something completely the opposite of what you had sort of tried to foster, mm -hmm. then I think you're on reasonable ground. You know, but on the other hand, if you just said no, we're blowing this off completely, yeah. then I think you then I think you may have a problem. Right. So, well, and the history is that I believe the line the town has been sued five times over the years on over zoning, and we won every one except one minor one. I think it's in that right there. Um. So, so uh, historically, the town has defended the zoning and has won. So. Which is a little comforting. Uh, well, I mean, so, I mean, I'm going to say it is a, uh, I don't know if I'd use the word danger, a concern that a developer would come and um, propose, want to do a big development. Another concern is that the town will continue to shrink and it will. I think lose the small town characteristics. If the Lime Country store decided that's it, I can't do it anymore, what does Lime become if the hardware store says, I'm done? Uh, what does Lime become? I think it becomes a bedroom community of, of Hanover. Um, it's really it, Lebanon it because our commercial center is in Lebanon, right. it's not yeah. in Hanover. <laughs> Well, yeah, we that's are right. I'm sure. Okay. And there are hardware stores to the north. There are, and <laughs> and I love the guys that far at Lime Park. Actually, there's right. <coughs> and so, but if if we make it hard for the things that are cherished and valued to con to continue to exist in Lime, then what are we doing to the small town? So I, I'm just throwing no, that you out. Can, you don't you have can, to answer. I mean, this is all stuff that can go into right. the the introduction, I yeah. think. <coughs> and, and, uh, but you know, we we're going to come to this eventually. That the longer that introduction, the fewer people we're going to have that right. participate. Right. Okay. So that so that you can add all kinds of little nuances yes. to it, and you can yes. make it bafflingly confusing. I just I think numbers are are ways to understand. That, that uh, I have friends where the numbers come up and the shields go down over their eyes. I think Rich's idea about getting the RPC in here soon to tell us about that number is is especially it's a really good idea. I just because but, uh, but I think nice we have to combine it with some okay. preliminary All right. you know some preliminary information so that. People aren't just coming in here totally unprepared. There's something to send out. Yeah, something to something to send out. I mean, okay. not not to everybody's mailbox, but at least to you know, here's some information mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. might be helpful in conjunction with the, you know, as you think about coming to this wonderful meeting. 
Um, can, can we use those sentences we just came up with? Small town quality, um, master now. plan, this and that. Yep, I got the bridges thing. The, the yep. planning board has invited the RPC to come in and talk about their housing study. Um, we would be thrilled to have this room packed. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm getting silly. Uh, but we would invite people in town to come and listen. And can we have strength to entertain questions afterwards? Oh, sure. Um, but um, I think that's I think that's a great idea. As a matter of fact, I think it's a, such a good idea. That the question would be: Is there a series of people that we should have? Sure. You know, you know is there? You know, are there planners from Hanover or Lev that would? something to this. I would um, certainly be interested in knowing what what planners are recommending for non-municipal services communities. So there, yeah, there are case studies out there uh, of, of, I mean, the one that was closest to us was, was Sandwich, um, which is on the coast. No, you know, it's in the lakes. It's in the lake. It's, it's, right, it's not, not lake. Lake. Oh, it's it's not in, okay. Lake okay. Squam Lake. Squam, all right. That's right. All right. So, um, um, but, you know, they had a certain formula of strategies. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it seemed to me that they had people that uh, offered themselves up at this symposium, which discussed like seven different communities. Um, and um, each one presented their perspective on what they were doing in their community to try and solve this. And, you know, there were two guys from Sandwich. There were two people from a, a number of different places. Um, so we could, I could try and find that oh, video that page, or that, yeah. that thing again yeah. and come up with a name. Uh, um, and I guess I, I'm just sort of thinking that it would be nice to, to give a series of, of perspectives. Um, you know, just to just to try and cut down on how much explaining you had to do in our introduction. Yeah, I was thinking that um, you know. scenarios, examples. You know, if if the zoning would allow for like the barn conversion or for duplexes or you know something like that, a slightly larger ADUs. You know, give some specific examples, case studies, as it were. People can then observe the facts in more, like, e every time I would, ever was presenting, they'd say, tell a story. You know, and then that would be telling a story. And that's what you're saying with the example from Sandwich. Yeah, it was, it was more like the, their strategy mm -hmm. and how well it, how well it seemed to work. It's a story Everybody a sort of glorified it's it by saying we got a lot of people interested and uh, we think it's really going to go somewhere. So you don't really know. Oh, we had the housing yeah. provision or zoning too. I mean, to create affordable housing, and that got, you know, to a point and then stopped. You know, so there was an effort to try to use that provision. And just didn't. Yeah. Well, but I know I'm not saying they they just didn't have results right. at this point. You Maybe know, no, I don't think anybody does. Maybe you know, they they, know. they just have ways that they approached it and. You know, I, I guess it's just uh, so. Well, so it's kind of like we could use as a a story. Okay, we changed the zoning to allow for accessory dwelling units, and what has happened? Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's you know, that's we have our own story, and and then I guess David could talk about well, what do people find that's hard about creating accessory dwelling units? Because he talked to with ideas that don't actually get through, you know, with permitting. Yeah, the septic is a big yeah. yeah that, One of them is that the mini house has no septic. Right. No, that, yeah, that's a, a, right. a huge. That's a state. You know, that's a state yeah. thing that we can't do anything about. Yeah, well, well that, that's, and we want the state to be reinforcing that. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah well, that, that's you know, you look at the cost of a septic system, and know. you know, you add that on top of 
the, the cost of building an ADU. Um, you know, right at the end of your road, you're going to see an ADU. Um, I know. It's all dug up. Yep. And uh, oh, is that the Adams house? The Melanie, house? Melanie, yeah, yeah. Kurt and Amber Borland are yeah, putting yeah. in a ADU for his parents. Oh, and okay. it, it means that they have to put in a new septic. Mm -hmm. So it just immediately, you know. 200 year old house. Or something. Mm -hmm. It's probably a 1937 Ford in the backyard. Yeah. I think it's a Dodge, they said. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, years old, newer Dodge. You mean they buried the Dodge? Yeah. 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 And you put, you put, put the, the prairie home pipe in the rear window. window. That happened a lot. It was the prairie home companion uh, story. Yeah, that, but that happened a lot. I mean, I, had to, I did this in Dublin. And they, you they, put a ferry car. Well, when, when, the, when the inspector comes in, he says, well, where does this pipe go? And, um, what kind of what kind of septic system is here? Right. You know, and you say I don't know. He just makes his guess, which turned out to be right. When it was built, it's a cesspool. <laughs> well, that's not gonna that's not gonna fly. Yeah. <laughs> when, yeah. and it's like eighteen thousand bucks. You know, it, it actually happened. I was having eating out on Joe Steele's deck, and they were digging up the side yard. And the guy stops the tractor and says, "Found a car." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the problem. You know, there, there's no, nothing that's saying that somebody can't build a small house. You could buy five acres of land and put a thousand square foot house on it. But you've got, between your well and your septic and your driveway, you've probably got sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 before you even start building the house. So oh, easy. Easy. So then, you know, I mean, that's what happened. It's, you can't, it's hard to build anything that's affordable, you know, that's really cheap. And the land but, itself is going to be really expensive, so then, yeah, guess what? Mm -hmm. Nobody can afford to do it. But you could share those costs. I mean, uh, driveway and septic and water. Yeah, if you had a six split unit. Split across multiple units. Right. It doesn't cost right. five or six or ten times. But there, right. that's a perfect question that you're going to have to ask people. How are you going to feel about a six or eight unit? You know, I mean, because I think people are going to have strong feelings about that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It will be allowed six feet right now, right? Right. So, you know, no, not new. Not Only new. conversion. You have to take something out of circulation and, and convert it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, can we can we line up a couple of people to talk? Well, I, mean, I can I can uh, I can certainly try and find the names of these people. At San yeah, that would be great. Um, Sandwich. I mean, that's kind of a. There are other examples. I can yeah, well, that's not really like, like line because it's kind of a, a vacation home place. You know, I mean, it's, it's right on the well, lake. Well, it's a place right? that's got a lot of money. It's not yeah. home only, but it's close. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a different. Yeah, but it's a, it's, a, it's a small town, yeah. and um, you know, and there is a very vibrant year-round community there. It's not like uh, you know the place goes totally dead. Yeah. It's great. You can definitely there's some homes and. I mean, I can look at some other ones. There were there were other ones that that um, might be closer to Lyme. Closer yeah, to Lyme. and that you know that Lyme is pretty unique. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Well, I could, yeah, being close to the college and the hospital. And Maybe you can but find, I can find out what Norwich is doing. Oh, Norwich is talking about it, I'm sure, arguing about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they've been, they've been trying to get that into is what they do. the River for, or Hartford forever right. uh, in terms of water and sewer. Yeah. Wow. Uh, oh, I just saw somebody. Good. I'll, uh, I'll take a note to talk to somebody and see if they can give a pointer to another town, a couple Good. towns that are sort of like Lyme. Well, do we want sort of like Lyme and, and are doing something um, uh, toward, uh, uh, toward yes. housing? And, and have, yeah. <laughs> you know, not just like we, we're in the same problem that we yeah. are and don't know what to do. We want somebody who has a presentation, actually. We want somebody who's thought about this, mm -hmm. been involved in it, and has actually presented it. That's why I, that's why I went to these guys. You probably wouldn't want to use Orchard. <laughs> So, do we think we could get 
Let's see, how would we how would we go about getting and publicizing a meeting with the RPC? What do we need to do? We need to come up with a cover letter, I guess, to send to the I mean we need to we well, I kind of feel like we should be trying to get this goals thing out and then uh, maybe maybe we need to well, you understand know, if, the number if first. We, or, well, we could leave the number blank and say whatever the RBC says and then have that be the mystery and have them do the reveal at the presentation. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we were to do, uh, you know, dealing with each one of these goals, okay, so just sheer number of units and then how do we get affordable or, or attainable housing, you know, that could be one, you know, but focus them, you know, thematically around, like, what we've said, these are tentatively our goals. Um, you know, just in order to make them have some relevance and have some discussion, and then maybe the strategies around the goals would come out in those discussions as well, so we'd get more feedback from our public um, because we're talking about those exact things. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it seems like getting someone from Twin Pines or another housing um, provider mm -hmm. in that way would um, be interesting and have them give us the formula for how do you make something work in a small town that doesn't have water and sewer. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's like the fellow who did the building up in Orp in Fairley. Jonah? Yeah. Jonah. He used state grants, but he's not a housing nonprofit. Um, maybe he's mm -hmm. the better person to have. How many units is that? Eight. Eight. In Fairley. Right on Main Street. Yeah. Right on Main Street, Street, next to Chapman's. It's, I think it's six, but I think it's just three floors. Yeah, but I think he said he had to have eight. Well, he's got a one unit at the front, you know, the coffee shop. Hmm. Oh, I, yeah. I, I don't know that for yeah. sure. So. Yeah, I don't know how many. I'm sure it's right. headed to sure and one eight. of the it's units is, is actually commercial. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. six or eight, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Tell and that's why the roof is the Does way Does anybody it is. know him personally? I do. A little bit. A little bit. Enough to, like, say, could you come and help us tease out how do you get, like, a mid range size? Yeah, I could come. I introduced his parents before they got married, so I don't know. Aww, <laughs> that's such a nice story. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything that you were not uh, involved in? <laughs> I mean, I've been that's here a long time. Yeah, I've been here a long time. I've been that's here a long time. <laughs> Have you lived in line your whole life? Not not yet. Yeah. <laughs> so so, so I, I think when you're talking to him, uh, the question might be, is he willing to chat with us as a group, or is he? Does he have the ability to talk to like a public, a more publicly advertised um, meeting? I mean, I don't know anything about him. I, I would tend yeah, to think that he might be a little bit surprised or well, uh, intimidated. If he's got, he's a blogger. He's yeah. He's, he's oh, so he's probably got a presentation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He. He'd want to. He'd be able to talk pretty. Yeah, he's comfortably. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I know his parents really well. I don't know him that well, but yeah, he's, I've exchanged email with him. He's pretty outgoing. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I think he would be really interesting because he's been in it. And yeah. um, the other, I mean, Brett provides housing here in our community mm. to people that we're talking about that kind of diversity of income range. And. You know, I don't know if he wouldn't be a useful voice, I mean, certainly to invite him and to provide, you know, here's how I look at it in line, but, you know. So actually, it's sounding more like a panel now. Well, we could have them on different nights. Yeah. I don't think the Regional Planning Commission should be here on the same night as no, Jonah. Um, and so it's so. like dealing with a different, like, you know, growing the, Housing stock is something that so we have to get that number. Maybe the second one could be a panel if we yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. that would that would actually yeah. go from community level down to 
building level, the project level. Well, I don't know that anyone's you know really addressing this on the well what you're saying. No, I think the, 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 the sandwich people would um, be community be level, level, and then uh -huh. this guy would yep. be project yep. level. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So I should ask Jonah whether he come to a meeting with the public. I'm just saying with the public. Yeah, like a, oh yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Tell us about this project. This is a public meeting. Yeah. Right. Well, it's a public meeting, but I guess the question is, would he would he still be willing to come if he actually had to make a presentation and had to think yeah. about yeah about it as opposed to just well, the question, coming and chatting with the board? Does he have a well, presentation so he doesn't have to do any work? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he might, because he went to, he talked to the governor in Vermont. I know he has at one of those meetings, and he might, he might have some presentation. Yeah. So, we want to get the RPC in, so it requires an invitation. They, they need to see if they could come on a Thursday, ideally, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We also... We also need to get some kind of a cover letter to send out to the listserv and to post on, you know, around town. Um, we got to get a date first. Well, I mean, how much time do we have? It's getting late. Uh, okay. We've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was. Uh, can can we draft a note that says uh, all these good things that we, that we posited? Beginning, the Upper Valley Regional Planning Commission has agreed to come on X date um, and to talk about the um, the housing needs assessment that they put together. This and that. Some uh, in fact that it would um, their projections for Lyme, and this is an opportunity for the town to ask questions. Are they the same thing as the Upper Valley Lake Sunapee? Yes. 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 The same yes. Thing? Yep. Right. That was too long to say all in one breath. <laughs> but um, you know, could we agree on that language, have it ready to go, so that we could say, um, you know, as soon as they said yes, we could publicize that that note so people could get it on their calendars. And you would put it in the listserv. Sure. And town site or both? But you put it on the town site and then put a note on this sort of thing, go look at this. You can also do both. No. Got to put it on, I want people to go to the town website. That's, okay. all right. That, that is, we're trying very hard to get people to use the website as a resource. And, okay. and, no. and the, the request I would make then is that the link that goes on the list serve go directly to the affected page, yep. to the as opposed to going to a page that says, "Oh, it's actually over here." Yep, no, that's, okay, all right, yeah, thank that's you. absolutely thank you. reasonable. But just to uh, okay. uh, and and listserv is has a limited audience. There's not you know not everybody in town is on listserv, mm -hmm. so it's not you know. We're trying to make it that it is not it the needs, primary. It needs a couple of sentences to explain why you should click. Oh, that, that's. Perfectly reasonable, but we need to, you know, have the majority of the information on the, the town's website, and just point to it. So, are we thinking sometime in um, September? Doesn't that depend on the, the people that we contact and with their availability? Right. Yeah. So right. I was I was even going to say, can we approve the text now, and leave it? To you and to David, to, to work out a date with the, the RPC. I I think we, we need that? another meeting to okay. come up with the text. And sadly, I'm I'm unlikely to be here next meeting. So Which I believe you guys will be the, on your own. The site plan review is continuing next meeting. So the uh, uh, the home on the Connecticut. Home on yeah. the Connecticut is he's got his ducks. Yeah, I know. Um, going to give out a brand new set of everything tonight. Okay. Okay. You said he's asking for more now. Yes, he's asking for a third unit in the barn. Okay. <coughs> Good for him. Yeah, but that, that, again, there's no, there's nothing in the zoning that says you can't have 
that are limits the mm -hmm. so and no tiny home. Oh no, he still wants it, the tiny home. How's he going to deal with the? So he wants a conditional approval that uh, you approve it on the conditions that the, you get septic and power put in correctly. How are we going to assure that that ever happens? That's my question, but that's. So, I mean, yeah. no. Anyway, that, oh, that's, that's for discussion. Right. <laughs> Not you know, it, it's, yeah, it's like pipe dreaming. I mean, I bought a house that had uh, plans for two different septic systems. And, okay, well, where are they? Neither one of them had been built. And I had a straight, like, tar paper pipe. Is what my house had. Going to the street? No, go, no, 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 no. It was not going to the street. It was short of the street. No, no, it did not go to the street. It went to the toward the neighbors, but it stopped right at the property line. It was like you know, it's like really. So I mean, yeah. I, I agree 100% with you, but that's yeah. but that's to be addressed at the. Well, yeah, I understand. I mean, when he gets a revised permit, he gets approved. No, no. Well, that's yeah, is that a hardship for him to come back after he gets the approval? Is it cost him money? Um, he could come back and amend the, the site plan to add that back in when he has all the stuff and just update his site plan to... Yeah, so just not give it to him ahead, but give it to him after he gets the approval. Well, well yeah. you guys just figure sound, this out. This sounds like meeting. something yeah, you're talking about. It's a quarter to nine. Um, yeah. Who's going to be yeah. here next meeting? What date is that? I think it's, I'm pretty sure it is. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am here. not. You gonna be here? No. Taking August off in the finest French tradition. <laughs> no, just the first, just the first one, and, and I might be here, but we're supposed to be out of town till that day. Well, I'm not. Well, you'll be, be back for the evening. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. But get back at five. You yeah, exactly. Here. I'm, I'm here for the eighth. I'm oh, here. Good. Good. Matt, are you here? Okay. So we have a quorum. Yeah, everything gets approved. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I would be here. Great. So would would we have time to do some more work on this wordsmithing? The wordsmithing. Mm -hmm. I just sent it to like thought things that we had to Rich and to David. Um, that because I. Mm -hmm. with people we're talking. Okay. So it was those thoughts. If people have want to write up little suggested mm -hmm. language and circulate them, maybe we can... It's not just good to write it at the meeting. I mean, honestly, yeah. right. it's, it's the yeah. best thing to do is to have a draft and then people can comment on it at the yep. meeting. Agreed. Especially after doing a site plan review. And that's not going to be... It's not going to be short. short one. All right. Well, um, I get two things if, um, if you're all done with it. Um, here is that's a, um, his new application, or updated application with all the information. Great. Right. Was and he able to get it all done himself so he didn't have to hire somebody? Yes. Yeah. Good. And then here's a new site plan, which is just a single page. He's given a very odd size piece of paper. Oh, wait, I got two. Page and a half here. Jesus. They said it, holding them was an odd. So this was where he, we agreed that same. it could be at 1 inch equals 40 yeah. rather than 1 inch equals 20. So he met all So we just had, we should have two things here. Is that yes, we should have one, the, map, the application. one set of maps and, 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 the, map, and yeah. the other one is the application. So that he's met all of our requirements from before. I believe so, yes. Yeah. I'm going to double check that. But we're still waiting on a couple of things. Um, I did not include the, the police chief's uh, uh, response, which was just an email to me, and I made him go back and actually write it and put it on letterhead, and, which I ended up doing for him. But anyway, um, <laughs> for the police chief, yeah. And then um, he is working with uh, Aaron uh, Rich on the fire department response. Yeah. Yeah. Did he give us the? Um, so it's the same exterior lights that he gave us the last yeah. time. Yeah. But they are marked on the plan. Yes. And then the other thing is um, 
the board to act, um, the Dartmouth Skiway to yes. provide some more information. And so they have responded. Um, I'm going to oh ask. Uh, yeah, I was surprised. Um, I have a new person in charge who's really trying to be. Is that Mark? Yeah. Yeah, this is. Um, I, I, there's two sheets here. The top one is the letter the planning board sent. The second one is the response. Great. Just so that you know, have a reference to what the planning board asked. Thank you. And then um, at the end of his letter, he was saying he'd be willing to be here tonight. And I said, knowing that I wasn't going to get this to the board till tonight, I said, let's hold off, let the board look at this, decide where they want to go, and then have you come in and. Mark, I would like to be able to pronounce his name, but I, I don't. Adams, Adams, and Poland. Right. Okay. And so, David, are we going to have any response necessary on this, or is this just for our information? Well, this is for your information. Then, for the board, um, I would say probably at the second meeting in August, when everyone is going to be here to discuss how you want to proceed. Okay. All right. And then Whether if you would like to have him there yeah. to discuss that. So we just basically have to decide whether we think he needs to come to a meeting. Right. Or if you want to him to go to site plan review with you know, how the, the ski way has changed or if you don't think he's giving you enough information, that's you know entirely up to the This is is this with respect to the alcohol permit? Yes, yeah, so with the, the when the select board and asked us to yeah. review everything. And so this was the letter that was sent. And Isn't it more a change of use? Right. And is there enough change of use to warrant the planning board doing a site plan review? Or so I'll just tell you that they came in and made a presentation at the select board, not at, this, not at today's meeting, but at the prior meeting. And the select board withdrew its uh, it's an objection to the liquor permit. So I think this is a done deal. I don't know how, I mean, if we want to, you know, if, 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 the, if we as a group want to look at this and say, yeah. oh, no, we don't think we should have, this is a big change of use, I guess we could flip it in. But yeah. Why as, it, as it stands right now, this is kind of finished. So David, the select board decided that it wasn't, the liquor part wasn't a change of use. Yeah, they came in and basically talked to us and said, look, we're only serving beer and wine. We're only serving it when the ski ways open. We're not. I've never gotten drunk on a beer. Never, no. never. never. <laughs> it's not a. You know, there's always going to be someone with a liquor license there supervising the consumption. We're not. Right. We're not operating. Operating a tavern. We're not operating a bar. This is just sort of. Um, but anybody could come and drink because they're skiing, right? Yeah. And at night too, they have night skiing. I don't know. No, they, know. Know. No, no, they said they, that was skiing? the letter we asked. Rich asked that, and they said they don't. No, okay, they so it's only during the well. But basically, it is a bar. I mean, if they have it open oh, for they everybody, drink it. come on. <laughs> uh, I guess, but uh, yeah, well, it's fairly limited, and, and it's and, and I think the select board felt it was consistent with what they've been doing in the past. So it wasn't. Really I mean, it's the select board that asked the, the planning board to yes. Yeah, so why were we asked? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think well, no, the there, there was a there legitimate was, thing that they might be open until ten o'clock at night or yeah, something. Yeah. You know? There was a much. It yeah, seemed like there was a dancing in the whole works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, I think that this is a real big change. And many I think more they events and work. many more people and many more cars. And Sean was concerned about people blocking the road. I mean, yeah. it's an and Sean was at the meeting where they came, and he was fine. Yeah, it sounds like we so should stay with the fence. Are they paying? We can, the we can probably. Uh, uh, I mean, we'll we'll stick out we can stick on another. We should definitely try to screw it up. I think, <laughs> I think that's under discussion. I don't think that's been resolved yet. I think we need to stir the pot. So we can, yeah, okay. And so, the so we can is, slide in the, so, yeah, the housing, you know, yes, right. multi story. I think we should throw it in there. They're making really important noises about working with those under resolved. You know what happens there, I think, my Ski sense of it is, up. we have every five or six years this stuff bubbles up, and it's a big problem, and we have a fight with Dartmouth, and Dartmouth then sort of figures it out, and we work together, and we get the stuff right. solved, and then over the course of the next five years, everyone who is involved in that solution Changes. leaves. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, and so it starts, then all over it starts all over again. And so <laughs> part of what we're going to do this time is try, as these things get resolved, to memorialize them and put them in a standing memo or a, a contract of some sort that the parties have access to. So, mm -hmm. you know, the person who replaces Adam here can, or Mark here can, will know yeah. what the rules are. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's the good. Park, I was talking to Mark Shipley, who knows a lot about yeah. Skiway, and he was telling me that the parking, as far his opinion is that if they had valet parking, if they had somebody helping the cars to park, people park, they could fit a lot more people in there, and it may not be a problem. There may be enough parking there, but there really isn't. He said there really isn't any other place to park except for that parking lot. So that's the problem on the road. You know, the problem the is that the only time there's really a parking problem is when they have these big races right, or big right, events, right. and then they've just got. You know, they've got all the participants, they've got all the spectators, they've got all the right. parents of the participants, all of these people showing up. And, and uh, you know, one possibility also is to have remote parking on Dart at Dartmouth or in Hanover somewhere or someplace else that has capacity yeah, and then run shuttle buses yeah. back and forth. That uh, makes a whole lot more sense. Uh, rather than trying yeah. to cram everybody yeah. in at the yeah. skiway. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, well, it is. Sean gets a little worked up about right. this. Well, as he should. Yeah. I mean, it's dangerous. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Yeah. So we, we had this thing with the select board trying to work out the road and the road erosion because of parking off the road. And, you know, so we're going to put up these guardrails. And somebody else who I think lives down on River Road finds out that we're putting guardrails up by the skiway. And he must have been drunk when he wrote this letter. Yeah. Like this letter is just the most you can you feel the spittle coming off of the road. You know when one of my kids drives off the road into the Connecticut River, I'm gonna sue each and every one of you guys. We should be putting guardrails all along the Connecticut River. And, oh my gosh. Oh, Lord. Oh, man. Somebody all right, so you guys, you guys are all set here, right? So Showed it to my wife. Really see, need... look, isn't it nice to hear from your constituents? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to get involved. Okay. Um, I certainly uh, would. I think we sure. should. I think we have enough tonight. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Matt, can I take advantage of your good nature? Uh, what's up? Huh.